Only, only two questions are permitted. That's always a problem, isn't it? That's always a problem. <laughs> you mentioned about uh, the bio crude, which is produced using waste. Is it a mix of plastic and organic everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's, that's what I said. Uh, what, uh, what will be the kind of pressure which is used? To repeat that. What will be the type of uh, kind of pressure which is used? Pressure. Uh, the, the pressure is actually, it, it sells pressurized, it goes to about 180 bar. 180 bar. Okay. And uh, already a pilot plant is put up in Chennai? So we, we are a lab scale plant. We have a scaled up lab scale plant that is just coming up. We are doing a continuous uh, lab scale plant and we are looking at a pilot plant we set up soon. So we have got some investments for doing the pilot plant now. But about a five ton per day. So maybe in the next six to eight months we can get to see that. Good morning, sir. Uh, sir, actually I am not related to the Department of Physics or something. I am coming from uh, zoology and it's completely different from the science which we are talking about today. So I just have a common man doubt. Uh, see, if there is a common man or a lame man who does not have any knowledge about all these technology and all these things, but he has a great idea. Yeah. Is there any provision for, uh, uh, like, in order to connect with the person and to widen the opportunity? Uh, for that person to come into the field of uh, translational uh, research or something like that and to reduce the disruptive innovation that the person is going to do. Is there any provision that we can connect with that person and bring that person's idea or vision to the global uh, economy? Right. So, um, we just need to have a, let's say, a panel of such people that you can actually approach and that's where something like a Kerala startup mission uh, could, could help, right? Um, like they could have a panel of experts who are willing to listen to ideas from the so-called common man that you... That talk. I don't think anybody is really a common man, right? Each of them is unique and they will have some ideas. But many times they have mistaken notions. So, for example, in what we do, very often people actually come up with these ideas that we bucket them into what's called as perpetual motion machines. Right, so they will, they will have a car with a windmill that generates power that will run the car. <laughs> okay, that, that's, that violates laws of thermodynamics. That's a problem. So, question is, you need to know whether we are actually violating the first law of thermodynamics or violating the second law of thermodynamics. Right, so that means that you may come up with an idea, but you don't know that you're actually violating some laws of physics. Right, so go to an expert and he or she should actually be open to uh, listening to the idea and patiently explain because Ten times, nine times out of ten, you will probably get a person who is coming up with an idea that violates the laws of physics. And they think that they have got a great idea. And it, it becomes a huge disappointment for them when I come and tell you, sorry, I think it, it, it violates the laws of physics, I think it won't work. So, in my own experience, I'm, I'm partly responsive on LinkedIn, and uh, I don't know if people have noticed that. Uh, so, there are people who actually approach me, and I set up time to the extent I can uh, allow on Sundays, right outside of my my current work work hours, to listen to them, and uh, sometimes the ideas are like copycats of somebody else's ideas, and it's possible that these people actually don't even know that there are other people who are doing these things. So they are not exactly copying by themselves, but they are they are coming up with these genuine ideas, but they have been already done by somebody else or already being pursued by somebody else. So these people don't have a chance. There are, a lot of, there are lots of ideas which are actually doable, but they will not have a business case. Right? Who, they, they may not have a customer, they may, they may not be profitable, and, and they may not be profitable today. Right? Uh, it's possible that you need to have like some disruptive technology. For example, 3D printing allowed Agnikul to think about making rockets much more easily. Right? Until 3D printing came about, it was actually difficult to assemble rockets in a very precise manner and all that. So, you need to have some new technology that comes and enables you to do what you want to do in a cheaper manner that will become more easy. Always, 
uh, uh, but the, the underlying thing is most people actually come with an idea because it's their idea rather than saying that this idea will solve this particular problem for this customer, this set of customers. So the point I would like to always turn around and say is make it customer focused. Who are your customers that you're trying, what solve problem are you solving for them and then come back to what idea that you have that will solve this and then think about the idea and figure out like whether it will really solve and, and so on, right? That is something that is missing from a lot of people. They just come up with an idea and say they can actually work on this. So this, this and you will fall flat if you don't have that kind of a business sense or a business case for yourself, right? And, and the customer identification and so on. So when I actually listen to people on a uh, lot of Sundays that I, that I spend time, uh, at least about uh, two out of ten times, I actually find people with genuine ideas, genuine ideas that that will make a lot of sense, right? And then I try to encourage them, and then say, "I'll I'll make you investor connect. Is it possible? Can I actually take you in my lab and then let you work? I'll give you a corner, I'll give you some space, I'll give you some facilities, and so on. That's what I do. But that's actually single man army. That's not how it works. It has to be done in a more cohesive manner, uh, a, a, a cohort of people." Uh, that requires a lot of academics to step out of their comfort zones and be willing to help younger generation in doing these things. Many times, uh, academics do not know how to actually assess business cases and so on. So this, this is not so. This, this is not a. This, this is a generational problem uh, that that we are, that we are facing. Right? We are wanting to unleash the next generation uh, with the previous generation not having the wherewithal to do so. Right? How do you actually? unshackle the previous generation's thought processes that will enable them to, uh, you know, push the next generation. That's where I think we are stuck at the moment. But I think the next generation may not even bother about the previous generation after some time. They will just say, we'll just move on. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just figure out ourselves and go on. So uh, that, that, that would mean that if you think that you have an idea and somebody told you that idea won't work, you may not bother and then you can, you can disprove them and become successful. That's also fine. That's great. Right? So don't be biased about everything. Just, just keep pushing your, uh, you know, uh, boundaries. That's all I would say. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. I have a comment on uh, you see the present education system that we have, we do have in state uh, universities, especially. No, no, no. You, you can talk about IITs, even Princeton, yeah, Stanford. All, IITs all education IITs. system has problems. Yeah, <laughs> it's so much. Uh, We don't want to move. We don't want to break the barrier between the knowledge uh, barrier. I mean, uh, what between even if even if between physics and chemistry, yeah. people they do not want to make a change. So, as you mentioned during your uh, lecture, you were talking about the business model that we never learned from our yeah. uh, throughout the curriculum. Correct. So we suggested that you know a complete revamping of the educational curricula is really needed in state university. That a three credit course on entrepreneurship is necessary for all of us. So and and the course has to be taken by all the professors first. Yeah, no, I mean, we are, we are taking the, the ground for that. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, I mean, even we have a, you know, a suggestion from the teachers in that they, they do not want to change, produce their content course content. Yep. So the, uh, similarly, the engineering aspect, when we are doing, suppose, suppose I am from chemistry background. So when I do some material innovation and want to do a device, I am totally blank on device fabricant. I have no idea about engineering aspects of even basic uh, physics. We are failing. Similarly, on material side, physics people, they are doing on research on devices. They are totally blank on material properties. So these are one of the areas where we are stuck with. OK, I'll give you good news. You are not alone in this world. Pretty much every university in, in the world, not just in India or you know whatever your state uh, universities that you talked about, or the IITs, everywhere there's a problem. I actually call it like a caste system, right? So we have this problem that IITs all- are much, much better. Academic flexibility is even. It's, it's just relative. But you can, you'll see a lot of pushback. You, you will see that people are, so these compartments that you talked about that are, so departments are actually a, department is a slightly nice word for compartments, right? <laughs> okay, so we have all these, Compartments, which are all essentially so. The reason why department is called the compartment is called department is because they don't want to accept that it's a comfort zone that they are. Okay, so they are actually in their own comfort zone. You talk about even your research. The moment you do something that's interdisciplinary and you submit it to a particular journal, 
the reviewers will actually be up against you because they are not used to thinking like that. Okay, and then they will give you adverse comments because they just don't understand the interdisciplinary interdisciplinarity of it. So this doing something that's interdisciplinary between physics and chemistry or between physics and let's say some engineering and then so on uh, is kind of like uh, as if like some Brahmin actually st stepped out of some Agraharam or something. That's how that's how it is viewed, right? This is a global mindset. It's not a state university problem. It's a huge problem. So if, if this is exactly why I'm saying that, let's say for example, if University of Calicut or state universities in Kerala, or let's say Kerala Startup Vision, or any of you, any like your organization, right? Any of you actually stepped up and say, we will revamp this, right? We will, we will um, question, question this, right? We will challenge this current status quo. And we will start doing it completely differently, fundamentally, right? We will go approach this problem from first principles. You'll be a pioneer. Right? You'll be a pioneer. That's what we want. Ultimately, what we want. So why do we... Uh, let, let's just be understanding this, right? So if we are getting a salary from the university, we are actually working, we are doing some business with the university. If we don't get salary, you know, that means we are actually doing only knowledge for knowledge's sake, right? So, like back in those days, somebody will give some dakshina if they, whatever they please. That's not what it is. I'm actually getting a proper salary. That means I'm doing business with my university. It's not some, it, it's just camouflage this knowledge and all. We have to ask the question, what is this research that we are doing for, right? What, what business it's going to actually lead to? Unless we are able to, so many times when we write papers, we write this first paragraph as an application, right? Your PhD students will have to ask the question to the professor, who is actually working on that first paragraph? Because many times you just write the first paragraph for the application and then remaining part of it is only the research part. Right? But who is working on that first paragraph? You need to cultivate our PhD students to take that first paragraph very seriously. That's the thing. Thank you, no, sir. I think it can be done very quickly. If we just have to change our mindset and say, let's start today. That's it. I request Dr. A.I. Yahya, Head of the Department, Chemistry, to hand over the momentum to Dr. Satyanarayan R. Chakravarti, Professor, IIT Madras, as a token of appreciation. Thank you very much, uh, Satya sir, once again. Now we will move for lunch. Lunch is arranged in the near...